Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many more. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. Okay, guys and gals, welcome back to uh, this week's episode of the Random Heathen ramblings podcast brought to you by none other than uh midgard musings who uh is really just me (laughs) and uh and that's about it sometimes we get dingo on here um his work schedule prevented him from co-hosting with me tonight um but that's not going to stop us from rambling on as we do so um wanted to call attention to uh to all to 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 one particular thing and then ask a favor of everybody so the favor we'll get that out of the way um you guys know that this this uh podcast is uh you know broadcasted through anchor um which is a spotify company and spotify is the major platform where my podcasts are being distributed of course they're on apple podcasts google podcasts Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Pandora, you know, pretty much anywhere where you absorb your audio listening uh, enjoyments and pleasures and such. Uh, But the Spotify thing specifically, I was hoping that um, if you guys wouldn't mind, uh, if you do listen to me on Spotify, is to go to the Spotify app and when you, you know, find my, uh, when you find the podcast there, uh, give it a rating. I was noticing on the app, on the mobile app there's the um, option to give a rating and i would love um some interaction with that so i know a lot of folks also catch this on on my uh on the youtube channel here where it premieres uh in the morning um so if you are watching right now on youtube um check out the spot spotify i almost said the spodcast the spotacast <laughs> Uh, the Spotify uh, platform for the podcast and uh, give it a rating, you know, give it a, give it a vote up or, or whatever. There's like, you know, give it five stars. Um, it does help um, with overall, you know, every year when I look back and see, you know, the engagement and all that kind of stuff, you know, all your guys' uh, interactions and participations with that sort of stuff goes a long way. And I'm sure that there's other things um, on, on, on the other platforms. There's other, you know, options that you can do that so really whatever platform you're listening to this on if it's on youtube you know give the video a thumbs up and comment um, not just during the live chats but also in the description or in the comment section right so um the algorithms will will figure out that it needs to go out to more and more people if you if you do that and since you're here anyway let me know what you think about the show um so there's that the other thing is that um i recently uh, shared a post on I'm pretty sure every visual social media so I'm pretty sure it's, it was posted to Facebook Instagram and Twitter and I also shared it here uh, well maybe not Twitter because it was such a long post but anyway should have been posted to all those major you know platforms uh, YouTube included about the recent updates that I made to the uh, Patreon tiers um, and levels at which you can support 
you know, this channel. And I know that I don't really push my um, stuff like that that much because I figure, well, if it's, you know, if people are, are looking for ways to support me, then they'll, you know, they'll see the link tree link and they'll see that Patreon is one of them and there's merchandise and there's all that other stuff, you know, so I don't really push it that hard, but I did want to call attention to the changes um, that I made to the um, tiers of, of, of patronage on Patreon. So, you know, initially the, the entry level tier or like the, the bottom level tier was called the thrall level. And it was, you know, you get a shout out, you know, this and that. And I just, I didn't like the name of that because what thrall is to, you know, imply is like, you know, the bottom of the barrel, the lowest of the low, the like slave class. And I got to thinking about it and I don't really mess with my Patreon that much. And I would like to make changes um, where I'm a bit more, you know, interactive with that stuff. I'm using it more and I'm doing more with it because, um, you know, it's out there and, and I, I feel like everybody should be getting the best and, and most out of the, what I offer there. So the entry level or the, or the bottom tier uh, was changed from Thrall to Carl. And uh, so Carl's were in ancient society, the working class, you know, the, the, the farmers, the blacksmiths, the, the farriers, the, you know, the everyman, you know, sort of, per, uh, sort of people, you know, the middle class and the working class and everyday heroes, um, like folks that listen to my show are today were the Carl's of days and years uh, gone by. So I changed the name from Thrall to Carl because that just makes way much more sense. Um, it has not gone up, so it is still just a dollar a month. Um, and it really is just a way for you to, you know, pledge uh, your support in that way. And, you know, a dollar is not a lot. It's, you know, less than a cup, cup of coffee. Um, and if everybody that listens to my show um, pledged a dollar a month, everybody that subscribes to this channel, if everybody that follows me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, if everybody that, you know, uh, subscribes to the YouTube channel and follows me on the, on the podcast platforms, if everybody just donated the $1 a month or pledged that $1 a month, um, we could go, we could go lots of places. We could do all kinds of cool things on this, on this platform. Um, so no pressure, but I just wanted to remind everybody that, you know, you can do this for just as little as a dollar a month. The next tier above the Carl, uh, hasn't changed its name, uh, but it is the Jarls. Um, so the Jarls were like the, the, you know, the, 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 the nobility, um, class, uh, you know, above the working class, but not quite the kings, you know, um, class. So there's the perks to that are, um, if I'm remembering correctly, is um, you get a personalized shout out um, at the end of, of, of my podcasts. So at the end of this podcast, everybody who I have that is a currently um, a Jarl tier, um, what do you call it, patron on Patreon, gets a personalized shout out. And I thank you all personally. Not that everybody else isn't as important. I just want to make sure that the Jarls uh, on my patron uh, tiers, you know, on, on Patreon get the, get specially recognized. Um, then there's the chieftain and chieftain slash, slash uh, chieftess class, which is the second uh, to, to highest class. And the Jarl, I think, uh, is like a $5 a month pledge. The Chieftain is a $10 a month pledge. And with that, you um, not only get the, um, what's I'm going to call it? The, uh, you not only get the, losing my mind here, previous tiers um, benefits, I guess, or, or, or perks, but you also get a monthly rune draw. Um, so I've done those before where I would send emails to, you know, for my patrons, I would send emails with a monthly rune draw, um, telling you a bit about the, the thing. And that had pause that had kind of been put on hold. And I'm, and I'm going to be reintroducing that again at the um, chieftain level. So you're going to be getting the shout outs, you're going to be getting all that, and you're going to be getting a rune draw. And you're going to get a one time uh, $5 discount, $5 off um, any of my wood burned rune sets. So I do, you know, the, the birch, uh, rune sets and the, 
um, driftwood rune sets. So if you've not gotten one from me yet, you want one. If you're a patron at the chieftain level, you get a $5 off discount on those runes and continue to get the monthly rune draw from me, emailed to you at the end of each month and the shout outs at the end of each video. So that's pretty cool. And then the last one is the Aesir level. Um, so the Aesir level is like the, 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 obviously the best of the best, you know, it's, it's God tier <laughs> um, patronage. Um, and that is a $35 a month pledge. You get the monthly room draws, you get the shouts out uh, at the end of my videos, you get the discount on the room set. And then you also get exclusive patron and Patreon merchandise. You get four different merchandise items um, sent out to you in a year, one new item every quarter. So it's four new items in a year um, and they're sent out to you quarterly. Um, and that's a lot, like that's a huge pledge, you know, to do that. Um, $35 a month. That's, you know, that's a nice dinner for two at Applebee's um, or a really indulgent dinner for one at like, I don't know, Chili's. Um, but anyway, you know, think about it, check it out. The link tree link is, is posted in, in all of these podcasts, every description of every video, every show note of every podcast episode has the link tree link that contains everything, including the Patreon uh, page um, for you to, to, you know, potentially sign up, but it'll be, it'll be there. And that's kind of the way things are going now with, uh, with Patreon. Um, I haven't updated anything as far as the YouTube channel members go. And I know that that's another way that people can, you know, sign up and be kind of exclusive members to um, YouTube stuff. Um, that is its own thing, right? That has its own separate you know, stuff, you, you become a, a YouTube channel member, you get, you know, prioritized um, engagements on live streams. And, you know, um, I, I had talked about doing an exclusive monthly or so live stream with my channel members. Um, and that has yet to happen because again, I'm so, you know, so busy with everything. So I go and I try to restructure what I'm doing and, and, and figure out what's going to best work for my lifestyle. Um, and, and still give what you guys are looking for. Um, but I'm thinking of um, looking to incorporate the gaming live stream as part of the uh, channel member thing or, or whatever. But I, I mean, I like doing that. I like getting more people in on that. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the channel membership things will just get adjusted. There's no um, requirements to enjoy that either. Because, um, you know, the perks are just, you know, you get prioritized um, priority. In, in the chats and stuff. So again, it's, it's just a way to help support what I do here because time is, is valuable um, to all of us. And um, you know, the time that I spend doing these things are uh, could be time spent doing other things. Um, and I thought, well, why not try to um, get back some of that time monetarily um, beyond just, you know, the ad revenue or whatever, which is super, super minimal. Anyway, enough of that. Um, you guys ought to know by now, if you're new to the channel, if you're new to the podcast, um, now you know. Um, but for all of my repeat listeners, return or you know people that return each week and listen and follow and everything like that, um, just having you here, engaging, talking about stuff, commenting, liking the video, sharing the the, the podcast, wherever it is, however it is that you do it, um, that's where you know everything really shines, and that's where the true um, value is to me. Because without an audience. Um, I wouldn't have any of this. So I want to just say thank you and keep doing what you're doing. You're awesome. So now that we got all that stuff out of the way, that took up a good little chunk of time. Uh, a couple of things that um, I figured I'd ramble on about. Um, and they kind of sort of tie in, I guess, in, a, in, a, in somewhat of a way. Um, you can always find a way to, you know, tie things into each other and, find the connect the dots as it were um but for um folks that don't follow or subscribe to um this one particular youtube youtuber heathen youtuber pagan uh youtuber arith herger um i'm gonna link his you know channel and stuff in the uh in the show notes and in the description he's very well he should you know 
for anybody that listens to what I listen to and, and, and follows me here probably already knows who Adi Thurger is. Um, uh, but he is a pagan from, I believe it's Portugal, with a lot of um, academic and archaeological background um, in, his, in, in, in his life. So he, he approaches things from a very academic and archaeological uh, point of view. And occasionally he will um, upload things that are a bit more um, UPG uh, type stuff, or maybe not even UPG, but that are um, much more lighthearted, you know, more like a conversation, more like a, a sharing of, of thoughts and ideas uh, with people. And uh, his most recent video that, that came out, you know, just, well, this is airing on Thursday. And I think the video that I'm referring to came out on Wednesday of the same week. Um, was a was a short enough video that I, I I caught it the day that it came out. Usually, a lot of his, you know, academic stuff goes into the length of of time that it would take to watch a movie, <laughs> you know. So I, I I digest it in bits, come back to it here, there, and everywhere. Kind of like probably how some of these podcasts go, where you know you'll pause, stop, come back, whatever. But anyway, this video um, was about uh, the resilience of our ancestors or, or our, you know, the resilience of ancestors. And it was a really touching uh, video that he, that he put out. And I wanted to talk a bit about it because um, I've mentioned a, a number of times, whether it be on a Facebook post or tweeted about it, or even in my videos and in, in live streams and in podcasts or whatever, where I've talked about how, um, you know, ancestor veneration is so critical so so crucial to how we pagans do our thing how 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 we pagan how we heathen whatever right how we do what we do um it's it's an it's an inherent and integral part of our religious practices maybe not the religious practices so much as it is the spiritual practices but i think they're you know the you know the some of those things kind of intertwine at times you know the religious stuff with with regards to how we interact with the gods and the sacred realms and then our spirituality which is how we interact with the local spirits of the land and the homes and, and our ancestors um but there's some i think uh times where things kind of intertwine and cross over a bit so i really liked to hear um Ari Thurger's approach on um ancestor um you know, honoring the ancestors or, or understanding and, and getting to know the resilience of our ancestors. And some of the points that he brought up were, I think, really, uh, really timely. You know, um, he actually shared with uh, uh, his audience a, a very powerful story of, um, you know, uh, some of his, some of his relatives, his, his ancestors, grandparents, great grandparents, great, great grandparents and stuff that that lived in a village um where he's from you know he was describing the the layout of the land how you know it was it was a small village and it was you know it had its you know township or whatever but then there was a lot of wilderness and around it there was mountains there was hills there was you know woods and forests and, and things like that but uh the the story that he told um which, you know, you guys can go back and, and watch the whole thing. I think it's less than 20 minutes long. Um, so you guys can go back and check it out. But he, he was talking about how um, uh, it, was, it was a family member who had gotten sick. I don't remember if it was his grandfather or great-grandfather or somebody had gotten sick. And I mean, like, really sick, like deathly ill. Um, and he had talked about how uh, whoever it was, whether it was his great-grandparents or great-great-grandparents, whoever had to take uh, you know, his, his relative, his ancestor to town, to a doctor, because all of the local, um, you know, the, his grandmother or great grandmother or whoever it was who, who was, you know, into the, the herbal treatments and the natural remedies and all of the things that they knew how they could heal, treat and, and heal and treat uh, illness wasn't working. Um, so they had to go without of their tribe. They had to go without of their village. They had to go without of the sanct sanctuary and, and confines of their village and, and seek aid elsewhere. Um, but it was a very treacherous uh, journey because of the dangers that were around and, and about 
their village you know it was it was wilderness and there were wild animals there was you know treacherous uh, terrain there was the weather you know there was a lot of things and it wasn't just like you know a, a hop skip and a jump in a car or whatever to the nearest hospital it was like they literally had to carry this boy from their village in their arms through the woods through the rain through the snow through whatever it was and take him to um you know a more uh, uh so, like i say civilized but a more you know occupied somewhere that had you know modern medicine to be able to treat him otherwise he would have died um and he he ref, you know talking about that story and, and hearing him uh reflect on the resilience of his ancestors and, and you know reflecting on you know what it must have been like to been to be faced with that kind of uncertainty to not even know if you were going to survive the journey to the doctor, you know, or to the physician and then to, to get your boy healed um, or given the medicine, or even if the, what, you know, if the medicine was going to work, you know, all those uncertain things, but taking the chance, taking the action to do it, um, despite the, you know, risks that, that, that went along with it. And I think there was, you know, that was some really, uh, really good things to think about because, when it, when it comes to action and when it comes to doing things um, as, you know, whether it's, you know, practicing our, our religious observances or, or whatever, it, you know, a lot of people are like, well, how do I do this? When should I do this? What do I use to do this? You know, all of the mechanics and specifics of things that people get hung up on. And sometimes those are the things that will um, get, get a person so hung up that they just go, ah, well, forget it you know, and they, or they just won't do it. Well, I don't want to mess it up. You know, um, I don't know how I've never done this before, you know, I'm nervous and whatever. Um, but what do you lose out on when you do that? If you don't take that chance, if you don't carry yourself out of the village, if you don't, you know, take yourself out of that comfort zone, if you don't do the thing, you know, it's better to be active. It's better to do something than to do nothing. Action is better than inaction. And we see this theme repeated uh, throughout sagas. We see this mentioned across, you know, different um, texts like in the Havamal and, and such where, you know, it's, it's better to do something than to do nothing. Or maybe it's not in the Havamal. I might be misquoting or not even quoting, but mis, uh, mistaken. I may be mistaken about where it is, but the theme of it is that, you know, you should do something, anything, even if you mess up, even if, you know, you made the mistake, at least you did something because the stagnation, the, the not doing of things is worse than if you were to do something and it be the wrong thing or do something and be, you know, mistaken in, in doing so. Because imagine had, you know, um, the boy's parents or grandparents or whoever they were, imagine if they had said, Boy, I don't know, man, you know, those wolves could eat us alive or, you know, the storm is, is you know, we, we could die of, of exposure. We could, you know, slip and break our ankles. We could, you know, fall victim to bandits. We could, you know, all these things. What if, what if, what if, you know, and then they, they decided not to do it. That would have determined and sealed that boy's fate, you know, and he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have survived because it was due to the modern doctors and the medicine at the time. Um, that was able to heal him beyond what the local, you know, remedies of, of the villages, um, you know, grandmothers and, and, and doctors and things of the village could, could do. So, you know, again, had they not taken that chance, had they not done that thing, had they remained stagnant, had they remained stationary, had they just hoped for the best, you know, keeping our fingers crossed, sending thoughts and prayers, you know, Had they done that, the boy wouldn't have lied, wouldn't, wouldn't have lived, and Arith Harger would not have um, manifested himself in the way that he has, at least today, um, so far as we know, at least. So, you know, it got me to thinking, um, and I guess I'd go back and, you know, watch the whole video and get the full context out of everything, because um, it got me to thinking about uh, some other things that he mentioned in there about what you know resilience of our ancestors is and how we look and we uh you know reflect and we are remi reminded of how tough life was for them you know 
for our, you know, for folks like my age, uh, for our grandparents and our great grandparents, and maybe even our parents, depending on just how um, late or early in life uh, things got going for them. Um, but, you know, the likes of those who, you know, when, you know, even just, you know, a few decades ago or half a century ago, how much different the world was and how much harder things were to, um, to, achieve, to achieve and how you had to work harder um, to get things done and the resilience that was needed to, you know, to, to, to meet your goals. You know, a lot of folks, I think, nowadays compare the struggles that we face as a society now and as, and as, and as, as a species now. Um, a lot of people will compare the hardships and, and, and the things that we face now as being so oh, you've got it so much easier now. And, and I may be, you know, pointing fingers a little bit here at, at certain generations um, where they say, well, you know, in my day, I had to do this. And it was, you know, it was much harder back when I was at your age and, and this and that. And I've been even guilty of that, too, you know, because I've gotten to an age now or I'm falling into an age category where I look at people that are, you know, 15, 20 years younger than me. And, you know, looking at like, man, you know, when I was your age, I had to do this and I had to do that. I suppose that's, you know, part of the natural human experience where, you know, when we experience things, when we experience hardships, when we have gone through, when we have been resilient, we, we, we get a chance to boast of it. We get a chance to say, yeah, I did this. I accomplished this because of the hardship, because of the challenge, because of the, you know, difficult things that lay before me. Um, but it doesn't take away from the kind of diff, like, you know, some things, yes, and, and I think everything's relative, right? You know, you look at the difficult times that, that people faced, you know, 50, 60 years ago, you know, um, and, and what kind of challenges they were. And you look at challenges nowadays and it's like, wow, if they had the things that we have now, 50, 60, 70 years ago, the challenges back then wouldn't be nearly as, as difficult as they are now. Um, because of the modern conveniences that have, you know, been developed since then. Um, but again, everything's relative, right? And there are, there, there are still great challenges that, that face us. There are still plenty of hardships uh, that befall us. And nobody should be downplaying someone else's hardships because it's not the same for you as it is for them or, and them for you. Because you don't know what people are going through, you know? It's like, oh, well, you know, uh, and I'm just using this as an example, you know, to, to, to battle cancer is not the same as battling depression. Man, you don't know that. You don't know what that person's going through inside and how much it's killing them. Now, you know, scientifically and, and physically, you know, the physical damage that gets caused because of the, you know, the, 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 the veracity um, of, of cancer has and, and the physical toll that it takes. Um, may not be the same or equivalent or compared to the kind of damage that suffering from a mental illness may have. But, then, but nonetheless, it is still a, a hardship and it is still something that is tearing away at somebody. It is still something that hurts and that destroys and that wears you down and that, you know, again, you don't know what people are going through. So it's not fair and it's not right and nobody has the right to say, well, you know, my hardships were worse than yours and you don't have any, you know, you, you, you can't possibly know what it is that, um, that I went through because you've never gone through this, that, or the other. I've, I've, been, I've been told that, you know, well, you can't possibly understand what it's like because you haven't experienced it. I mean, that may be fair uh, in, in some ways, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's empathy and then there's sympathy, you know, sympathy being the thing that I know what is it you're going through. And I, because I've gone through it myself, I've, I've experienced the same thing and I can sympathize with you. Whereas the you know, empathy is, I can imagine what you're feeling right now, even though I've not ever experienced it myself. Um, so yes, I mean, there, there are some differences to that. I just, you know, I think we all have, um, a very important role to play in this sort of thing, especially amongst our heathen circles, our pagan circles, and, and without, because the people that we tie our threads with and tie weird with um, come from all different walks of life and have experienced many different things and have needed to be resilient on many different levels. 
And the resilience of our ancestors is one of the things that we inherit when we uh, grow through our lives. You know, the, the experiences that our ancestors had were fed into that orlog and in that, you know, that, that becomes layers in the well that folks like us as descendants then have to redeem and, and work off of, you know, and then we lay down our own layers. We, we, put, we put down our own um, luck in the well, and it becomes a thing that becomes orlog for our, you know, uh, descendants when we become ancestors. Um, you know, so, you know, I think a lot of, a lot of times, you know, people look to try to romanticize, you know, the heart, you know, the hardships of, of, of centuries ago, you know, or the, the, even the hardships of decades ago and, and how much harder things were back then. I mean, they were hard, but every, I mean, life is hard, man. Like, have you woke up recently? Have you taken a breath? Have you opened your eyes? Have you looked around in the world? Have you been sentient at all? Like, shit's hard, man. Like, and, and life is, is, is not easy. Um, maybe it's easier for some and maybe some have a, have it better than others um, for various reasons. Um, but nobody said it was going to be easy and nobody ever, you know, no, it's, it's not, it's, it, it's not. So, you know, kind of to, to, to feed off of that topic and to work into the next one, I, I, I had a conversation with somebody, you know, talking about, how we tie threads with people and, and the people in our lives, <clears throat> in our lives, and how they're not always in line with our beliefs. You know, there, there's there's plenty of people who um, we 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 share uh, existence and, and, and tie weird with who aren't pagans, who who don't follow the same, whether it's family, whether it's friends. You know, um, and I have one particularly who um, I don't talk to very often. Um, and she's been part of my life ever since I was a kid, you know, I was 10, 11 years old. Um, and the farm that I've talked about several times in different podcasts or on different, you know, videos and whatnot, I used to work on a farm three, four, three or four days a week, um, when I was about 10 or 11 years old, all the way up until I was like 21 or so when I moved from New York to, to, to Tennessee. And uh, the woman that I'm talking about, this person I'm talking about, she was like the farm manager um, of this place. And it was, it was a community farm, right? So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't like, you know, a big, big operation with, you know, dozens of heads of cattle and, you know, hundreds of acres of, of land and, and stuff. This was a small uh, community farm, um, and we would, uh, we, we, we raised beef cattle. Um, so depending on the size of our community at the time, I remember the community being large enough where we would do, you know, four steers in, in the spring and four, uh, two or two steers in the spring and four in the, in the fall, we would, you know, slaughter them to provide meat for our community. And of course we would do more in the fall because of the longer winter months. And we wanted to make sure that we had plenty of meat uh, for the community over the winter. Um, but then it got down to the point where we would only do two a year, you know, one in the spring and one in the fall. And it, and it lasted us enough because the, the size of the group um, reduced. And uh, this was like, a, this was a church community. Okay. This was a, this was a, I, I grew up in, you know, non-denominational Christian um, background. So this wasn't like, you know, homesteaders with no religion. This was a very religious backed thing um but our you know so much of the day-to-day -day life uh was was very tribal you know we, we we grew our own food we took care of our own we we you know made sure that if somebody needed something that we would take care of each other and it was very tribal um which is i think a lot of the reasons why the heathenry model that i adopted and want to want to cultivate and, and see grow um, feels so right to me because I saw it work. I saw the fundamentals of tribalism play out in a very wholesome way. And I also saw its challenges, right? So I have those experiences to, uh, to go off of. But um, this woman who was the farm manager, uh, 
is is still around. She, of course, the farm has has since um, you know been de, de, disbanded, uh, and the group, the church group or whatever that I grew up in, has has largely disbanded as well. It is it is a shell of what it ever was, um, and not in a good way uh, either. Not in, not in not in the longest sense of the word. Not not in the I'm trying to find the words here, but not in the <laughs> Not in any sense of the word is it is it uh, improved, but I'll leave that at that. I, I I don't participate in that anymore. Of course, I'm not I'm not there. So I'm speaking probably out of line, but I just from the things that I know, it's 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 gone downhill a lot. But anyway, um, because of that, right? So um, this woman, uh, she's no longer part of that church group. The farm is gone, has been for, for many, many years, um, but we still keep in touch. She's actually the only person, if I think about it, the only person in New York that I still keep in touch with on a regular basis to any extent because of my family situation. And you guys know about that from listening to very recent podcast episodes and, 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 and going back through my catalog and whatnot, you get a sense of the history of things. But She's the only one who, despite everything, has remained a friendly ally, you know, has, has remained somebody who I can um, not feel like I'm being judged or whatever for uh, or, or, or judged by on anything. And we had a conversation that was about two and a half hours long the other day. Because she had sent me a text and was like, hey, I've been thinking about you um, and would like to talk with you, you know, catch up a bit. Like, sure, absolutely, you know, and you guys got to think, right? Like this woman was the farm manager for 20 some odd years before I ever even came around uh, or close to 20 years. Um, by the time I came around that I was on that farm for a decade or, or longer. Um, so she's like a mother or, or like almost like a grandmother. I think she's in her 70s now. Sweetest woman in the world, man, just and, and smart, you know, um, knows a lot about gardening, hunting, um, identifying birds and trees and what's good to eat and what's not to eat. Just, you know, it, you know, without, without sounding disrespectful, she's, she was, you know, like the, the village witch, you know, always in the kitchen, always making something, always knew how to cook something up to make you feel better, you know, knew about healing herbs and medicines and things like that, just, but a really, really wonderful woman. And I love her to death. So when she's like, yeah, let's, you know, would you mind talking a bit? um catching up i'm like yeah absolutely sure you know so we talked you know um told her about my job you know caught up on things that she just doesn't really I'm like i don't really think i ever know what exactly it is that you do and and, and such and I'm like yeah so this is what it is and this is the nature of the business and you know she's telling me about stuff that she does in new york and everything and then we started you know talking about other more um weightier things you know things that are uh, connected to our, my, my relationship with my family. And, um, interestingly to, you know, the, the, the relationship that, that she had with my mother over the years, you know, you would have thought that they were sisters that they had, that, you know, that they had grown up and spent their whole lives together. Um, that's how close they were to each other. And that relationship has become estranged and they are no longer they no longer speak to each other and it all happened right around the same time uh, of year last year um or within you know yeah within within a within a month or two of the same the same time frame everything when everything started going downhill for me uh, with my family was when things started going sideways with her and my mother and uh you know you start putting two and two together and you realize that there's a common denominator. And so we start talking about that um, and, and, and start talking about the reasons why we think things had happened or, or, or not even reasons why, but just being like, yeah, well, this happened around this time. And oh, really? Well, for me, this happened around that time. And they are two of almost identical things. And wow, isn't that interesting? And, you know, who was the, who was the most common, you know, the common denominator? What, what, what can we find that's that, that, that kind of connects the dots. Um, and then we get into talking about 
all of that. Now, even though she's not, even though she's not, you know, going to the, the 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 same church group as it was when I left, and even though that group is not even a thing anymore, and it's a totally different model it's it's you know i don't i don't know what it's become more like a my wife calls a cult uh, and i got i tend to agree um but she still um follows a, a christian philosophy and a, a christian worldview uh for, for you know from for from a religious standpoint you know and i was telling her i said you know i'm the obvious enemy here the fact that I'm the pagan and there, you know, you're all a Christian and, and stuff. I mean, I'm the obvious enemy. It's, it's, it's no wonder that things have taken the turn that they have because, uh, again, obvious reasons. I said, but what's really interesting to me is that you're an enemy of theirs as well, just because you don't, you know, you don't go to the same church. You don't, you don't adopt the same approach as they do. I was like, but you worship the same God. I said, that's really weird. That's, that's really, that's, that's interesting, you know? Um, and then we just started talking about, you know, the, the religion, the religious side of things. She started asking me questions about, you know, my beliefs. And I, you know, I go, well, you know, this is, you know, we've already two hours into this conversation about other stuff. I'm like, and now you're asking me about what, you know, this whole thing is. And I go, well, I'm going to summarize it up as best as I can, and, and because this could take another several hours, and that's just even scratching the surface. So I, you know, went into the the complexities of polytheism and the special, you know, especially the complexities of Germanic polytheism, and that there's more to the veneration. There's more to the more. There's more to our worship of the gods, and there's more to our religious uh, activity than just the worship of the gods. There's you know the spirituality, like I talked about before, where we venerate the uh, the vatir, the, the spirits, the whites, whatever of the land, um, and then we have a very strong connection to our ancestors. And ancestor veneration is a huge thing. And she, see, you know, she was very quiet, um, but she was listening. You know, she, you know, she was attentive. She was giving me you know those verbal nods when I was talking and i'm like wow she's really absorbing what i'm saying here and i've honestly never felt that with my family from you know new york my mother father's you know side of things and and uh so it was like wow you know i'm, I'm not just talking to the void and, and having a person on the other end of the phone or in front of me i'm actually having an engaging conversation here like i'm sharing something with somebody in their intent uh, uh and intent intently listening you know and she asked questions throughout and i gave my responses and you know she and then at the end of it all she's like well she said i definitely don't uh and i'm, I'm paraphrasing but it was you know it was along the lines of she and I, I, I definitely don't um agree with with that sort of a religious belief um she says but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sit here and condemn you for your own beliefs he said that's just not for me and, and that's not what i think um you know should be done she says but i'm you know she respected me for my own belief she wasn't sitting there trying to convince me that i'm going to burn in hell or, or whatever else i've been told over the years you know um, by members of my family and that i'm you know um um, um what was it what was it when i was i was told i was so far lost or so far gone in my idolatry um or whatever words were used pretty pretty damning things to say to somebody i mean it was it was not nice <laughs> to say the least um but you know she had uh given me the time and day to say what i wanted to say and explain and, and answer questions and then at the end of it all she says yeah you know i don't necessarily agree with you i don't you know not not my thing but if that's your thing then and so be it and I, you know, I said, you know, I, I told her, I said, uh, her name is Chris, Christine. I said, Chrissy, I said, if you were to tell me right now that you've heard enough and that you don't ever want to talk to me again, I said, it would not surprise me. And I honestly expect it because of everything that I've had to go through. I said, so that's why I'm so open. And that's why I'm so transparent with everything's because I got nothing to, sh you know, I got nothing to hide. And, and, you know, if you're asking questions or we're having conversations that I'm going to be real i'm not gonna sugarcoat it i'm not gonna beat around the bush i'm gonna be open about it 
and I expect people to shut me out of their lives after hearing the honesty and the upfrontness. And she said, oh, no, no, no. She said, I'm not going to do anything like that. And I said, well, I appreciate that, you know. Um, and I told her, see, you know, we, you know, if you ever, in, you know, find my, yourself in our neck of the woods and, you know, you need a place to stay, you have, you have a roof over your heads, open those doors of hospitality to her. And she reciprocated and said, absolutely. Don't ever feel like you can't come to me or, or come here and see, and see me because of, because of everybody else, you know, because I did, I, I, you know, I've refrained from going back to my home state because of what people have said, well, you're not welcome here. Okay, fine. Then I won't go come to find out I am welcome by at least one person. And that one person is, is, is somebody who I've tied a lot of good weird with. Um, and even though there's the zip, you know, the, the separation of, of religious views and, and all that, that doesn't seem to be a thing that I feel is in hindering us from continuing uh, having a relationship and, and keeping open line of communication with. And I feel like that is such a refreshing thing to share. Because a lot of what I talk about here on this podcast is, you know, about the challenges and about the, you know, the difficulty of being pagan in a world that is, you know, so against, you know, alt alternative religious views and especially in the South, man. I mean, maybe not so much in, in other parts of the world. Uh, maybe it's even worse in other parts of the world that I just am not exposed to. But here in the United States, I mean, in, in, in the Southern United States, that Bible belt, you know, slap that big old buckle on there and knock yourself silly with it kind of place, right? Uh, you get all kinds of nuts. And, and I'm not even from around here, right? But the, the, the religious persecution that I've endured, as it were, and don't get me wrong, like, I'm not trying to say like, I'm, you know, I've been threatened to be burned alive or whatever, but it's, you know, it's, it's definitely an intolerance of, of my religious views. Or from people that are from a pretty... I guess liberal uh, state, New York. Go figure. But um, to find to find somebody that, like I said, you know, the challenges, the the difficulties, the resilience that we face. This is this is real stuff, guys. This is not you know it may not be you know having to walk uphill both ways in two feet of snow, barefoot to go to school and get loaf of bread and, and come home and cook dinner and split wood and all that, like, you know, our great, 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 great grandparents may have had to do. Uh, but this is, again, a challenge. And this is something where, you know, we have to be resilient. Um, and, and, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to compare the two. You know, this is, you know, having our, uh, having our feelings hurt or having our pride beaten in or, or having our egos bruised, you know, is, 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 something that we have to deal with internally and something we have to to get through and, and be resilient with in that own way it's not the same as you know physical hardships but it does carry its own sting and it does carry its own burdens and it does carry its own weight so be be resilient and and be open and don't you know i i could have i could have done so many things differently you know over the years i could have heard the things that were said to me by my my family and been overtaken with bitterness and anger and shut everybody out you know block them on social media block their numbers tell them you know don't ever talk to me again i hope you die whatever don't call me if you need anything i could have and i didn't and i haven't and i won't I remain resilient in my approach and i've always maintained the approach that despite all of that call me if you need me let me know if I can help with anything and I still love you. So again, doesn't, doesn't fix everything. Doesn't change what the facts are. Um, but this little, ex, you know, experience that I had with, uh, with Chrissy um, on the phone for two and a half hours uh, was, was so, you know, invigorating. It, it, it was, it breathed new life into my outlook on things. And I'm hoping that sharing this story and sharing these stories will help breathe new life into some things that you may be experiencing and to give you at least a, a glimmer of, of hope that, that this is possible, that it can happen. And that is if you remain resilient, if you remain you know, convicted without being a jerk about stuff, I mean, sometimes you just got to be bold and brash, but 
be be bold but be kind um and, and approach things as you would if, how you would want to be approached you know that old adage treat others the way you want to be treated man you know it says that for a reason and, it, and it's more truth than anything right you when you treat someone how you would want to be treated you know respect people that have come before you that have done things to withstand the trials and tribulations that they have and have stories to tell about it and have the scars and the gray hairs and all that to prove it, right? Be resilient and you will one day have those stories to tell. So it may not seem like it's happening right, right here and right now, but don't give up, you know? Don't give up and don't give in, be resilient. So I hope that, uh, you know, today's episode has, has, you know, spoken to you because I have literally sat here and spoke to you uh, for however last long it's been. Uh, but I hope it is speaking to you beyond what you hear. I hope that, you know, the words sink in and, and settle in and give you some, some things to, uh, what I call it, digest. Um, so, yeah. So to my patrons, my chieftain and Yarl patrons, Janet King, Jeffrey Wright, and Alex D. Hail and thank you for your ongoing patronage. I appreciate you staying true to that level of support um, and being with me for all this length of time. It truly means the world to me. Thank you to all of my subscribers, listeners, followers, and supporters don't forget to like this video like this podcast rate this podcast if it's something that you do like be interactive let the machines out there know that this is the type of stuff that you want to be exposed and that you want to hear more of and listen to um, and, and see more things like it so definitely interact like comment share and subscribe and follow and all that fun stuff check the descri description for Ari Herger's channel and video that we talked about earlier in this week's episode um, definitely check him out if you aren't yet subscribed you will not regret it when you do um, and until we all talk again hail may the gods walk with you and may your ancestors smile upon you take care now <laughs>